Colette Brown is in the house. Colette, so happy to see you. Hey, Thank you so much. To see you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm, we've, I've been waiting for this to, to really dive in and talk to you because um, you get to learn so much about people. And even though we're in different groups together, and I know bits and pieces of your story, it's still nice to just have that one on one time yes. with, with colleagues and, you know, people that you really respect and adore. So you've been a personal wellness advocate. And it came from your own experience of being unwell for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. But then you found out and, you know, the solution and you now have this new uh, lifestyle and your passion about sharing your knowledge and helping others with radical transformation. Love that. Yeah. So what to talk about that? What was that journey like? And when did that light bulb go on for you? Where you're like, you know what? I need to like be all in and really make this my life passion and mission. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like to take it back to my childhood where it all began. Um, I was the second oldest of nine children. And as you can imagine, it was very busy and sleep was not really a priority in a sense of um, a daily lifestyle. Like we were getting things done. We were uh, kind of on a little working farm. We had horses and cows and dogs and cats and property to take care of and mouths to feed. And so, so sleep for me um, was my, my weak spot. And I didn't know that. And I didn't learn that until I got into college. But as a child, I was sick all the time. I was constantly on antibiotics. My fourth grade year, I was on um, seven times with penicillin. Oh and goodness. I had strep throat tonsillitis. And ultimately, what we know today about the microbiome is that when you're taking the antibiotics, not only does it kill the bad, but it kills the good. And I pretty right. much destroyed my gut microbiome, my ancestral DNA. And when I was living on the farm, I was able to interact with the earth and receive microbiome from the earth, from my siblings, from pets. And when I went to a sterile college environment, the floor just kind of went out from under my feet. And I started really struggling with, um, with, you know, stomach aches and, um, and I started breaking out cystic acne and brain fog and just tired all the time. And I, I was, I was on this mission and I was really uh, quote unquote healthy. I ate healthy according to the FDA, but not what we know today as really nourishing the microbiome. And so I was on a quest, constantly seeking advice and for 20 years. And it wasn't until right before I turned 40 that, um, and over those years, I was in and out of the ER. Um, twice in one month, I went into the ER. And um, the second time I went in, there was a nurse, luckily, that whispered in my ear and she said, you know, I think you might have something called leaky gut, but I didn't say anything because I could lose my job. And so she put me on the path. And right when I got that information, I dove in and I found an amazing um, GI who was actually a functional practitioner as well. And he, within 30 days of getting my labs back, said, this is what you need to do. Eat these foods, take these supplements and you'll be on your way. And I didn't believe him at first because I was told that I would never be better. I was chronically ill. And within 30 days, um, my life just transformed and what joy and happiness and life it breathed back into me. So it was a very, very in short, a very radical transformation in a short amount of time. That was a lifetime journey getting there. Okay. Now, now what was it that he had? Could you repeat that again? What he had you do and how, like, could you break that down a little bit more? Yeah. So um, when I finally found this doctor, he said, let's do a blood panel. And I'd gone to several doctors in the past. Not one of them had um, taken my levels, held it up to a functional chart because functional and Western are very different. Uh, functional is getting mm -hmm. to the root cause of the illness. Western is kind of putting a bandaid on it, which both are necessary, different right. cases. And so he held it up to a functional chart. He also did a full blood panel of 
food allergies and intolerances. And that had never happened in all the years leading up to um, me trying to figure out what was going on and why, why was I chronically ill and not getting better and getting worse. And um, so he did that. And so we had a snapshot of what was going on inside of me. And according to that, he said, okay, so we know that these are high food intolerances. Um, so you need to eat these instead and feed your microbiome and take these, um, these supplements to bring your levels up where they need to be. And let's get you on your way to healing and health. And he's like, and you're going to be fine. And this doctor works with really, um, patients that are very sick, you know, advanced Crohn's, other autoimmune diseases, and he's able to pull them back and, um, and really get things in check. And while it might not go into complete remission for some people, he gets it pretty close to, um, living a really healthy life without having the side effects of that chronic illness. So was it just leaky gut or was there an autoimmune component to it? Well, um, there, there, we, we definitely tested for some different, um, like, uh, for me, it was, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm blanking for, uh, my gluten intolerance. Um, okay. but, but they, it was, it was a, the, he thinks it was a false negative because I had cut gluten out probably three years prior to coming to him and I ate the gluten free, which would be white potatoes, rice flour, um, and these other grains that are very inflammatory to the body, even though they don't contain gluten. And so I started learning this like drip by drip, like what's wrong with things that don't have gluten in it. And, uh, I learned that white rice is higher on the glycemic index than table sugar. Um, I was told in my twenties that I had arthritis because I had really achy joints. And I knew that my, um, aunts also had rheumatoid arthritis. So why wouldn't I get it? It's genetic, right? Um, isn't that inflammatory though? It's inflammatory, right? Right. It is inflammatory, but, but the old information that we had, you know, if your if your parents had it, then this is something that you're, you're going to get. But we know that 95% of all autoimmune disease is from the gut and inflammation. Mm -hmm. And so you can get all these different diagnoses, but it comes down to the inflammation and only 5% is actually genetic and we can control a lot of these things that are going on internally um, by, by some simple changes. Mm. So what are some of the, the major changes that people need to make in their diet or lifestyle if they don't have access to that type of medical, you know, testing and things like that? Yeah. Um, there, number one, um, I, I like people, I have a program called what's on your plate. And what I found mm. through the program is that people, before they start their journey, they have to dig into their why, why do you want to be better? For me, I was tired of being tired. I was tired of being in pain. I was tired of like all, you know, I, I wanted to live life. I had, I have two daughters and I, I wanted to grow old with them and have energy to play with them and, um, be there and show up for them. Like I wanted to, and I couldn't fully do that because I was suffering. And so for me, I was looking in the future of, I want a long full life. And so dig into your why number one, number two, um, sugar, Sugar's uh, more addictive than cocaine. So really watch your sugar levels. And I'll give you a little clue here. Women, 25 grams a day, including fruit. Men, 35 grams a day. And mm -hmm. look at what you're eating. Look at your processed foods. Sugar is in everything that you eat. And so when you're not aware of that or you are aware of that, um, you can at least put that into balance. And most Americans are eating between 90 to 120 grams per day. 
and it's way over. So you see a correlation of diabetes and other diseases because sugar is very inflammatory. It's very addictive. And um, so sugar is an, a second thing. Number three is um, other inflammatory foods. Really be aware of what is inflammatory. And this is where I think the FDA does a really poor job of pushing out there based on old studies that were done by uh, large companies that had people come in and do research and they funded the study. And whenever a company is funding a study on their product, it's seven times more likely skewed in their favor as opposed to if it's an independent study, it's 50-50. So really look at the food you're eating. Um, and it, it's a long list, but I, I want to give one example of we know about omega-6 and we know about omega-3. Um, mm-hmm. What most people don't know is that our bodies naturally produce omega-6. They don't produce omega-3. So when we're eating um, nuts and we're eating grains, um, these are all inundating our bodies with omega-6 and omega-6 is inflammatory. Omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. And the ratio of what we're supposed to be eating is one to one or two to one, two omega-6 to one omega-3 or one omega-6 to one omega-3. Almonds, they're almost 2,000 to one. So when you're replacing uh, gluten, for example, with almond flour, you're getting this inundation of omega-6. That's why if you're going to eat almonds, it's great for you. And there's a lot of benefits in there. Eat a handful, eat like six almonds, 10 almonds done for the day, not bags. It's not a snack that needs to be um, like dumped into our bodies. So that's just an example. Um, White potatoes, uh, white rice, very inflammatory. Um, Even oatmeal, even though it's gluten-free, Uh, It creates inflammation. So really up the vegetables, up the natural fruit with the fiber. Um, If you're eating meat, get the grass-fed meat. It's very different than grain-fed. Eat the wild-caught. Eat a lot of sea vegetables. Those are very good for you. Um, The other thing is oils. Oils are very inflammatory if they're not well-sourced. So the oils that I say, get rid of anything that's like vegetable, corn, soy, peanut, those need to go. The vegetable, the the oils that should be in your home, avocado, coconut oil, um, extra virgin olive oil. Those are really good ones. Even the seed oils, um, they're processed and it creates oxidation, which is inflammatory in the body. So really be careful of seed oils as well. Um, And mindfulness meditation. Uh, We know that if your body is stressed, it can be worse than eating the the worst food in the world because it creates um, the, your it creates oxidation in the body and 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 the cells react to it. And we know that we're energetic beings. So if you're doing mindfulness meditation, it's going to help control that stress level. And one of the ways that you can do that that I love is breath work and an easy breath work application is um, box breathing, very simple to do where you're inhaling for five seconds, holding for five seconds, exhaling for five, and then being evacuated for five. That's another way. Um, Sleep is so important. I love that exercise. Yeah. Yeah. The box breathing. That's a great, 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 great exercise. Yes. Yes. And do that a couple of times. And Um, you're bringing oxygen into the body because when we get stressed, we get tense, right? And we're not, we're not filling our lungs with oxygen, which we're depriving the brain. So we're oxygenating the body. We're also allowing our minds just to slow down, right? And to get a grip for a second and just ground ourselves and say, wait a minute, let me, let me just think about this for a minute. Is it really that bad that I'm, I'm going to be five minutes late to a meeting because I I'm in Los Angeles. So like there's, there's traffic, they've blocked off the roads yeah. because the president's in town and I can't go like, it's going to take me an hour to go block. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so there's like really assess the situation. 
Um, and then uh, sleep. Sleep is really important. Um, seven to nine hours because uh, some people don't sleep deep through the night. And that's a whole nother topic to go into. Um, and when you wake up in the morning after you sleep, you can reset that circadian rhythm by going to your window and looking outside for 10 to 15 minutes. It's going to help reset your circadian rhythm so that you'll sleep better at night, um, wear blue glasses hour or two prior to bed, um, try to get off your screens to help your sleep as well. So there's, it's not one directional as you're hearing, it's multi-directional right. and they're all so important. I can't just put my finger on one. Um, but those are some highlights of things to be aware of that you can weave and integrate into your life. Mm, I love it. And there was so much information there and you're right. There's so many different aspects of health and nutrition and well-being. Um, one thing that I do want to talk a little bit more about, because I feel like it's such a problem and that's sugar. Mm -hmm. And I feel like my my podcast here, you know, I love to give information, but I feel like I can never talk enough about this because people do not get it with yeah. sugar. Yeah, they don't get it. And right. um, I always I, I've told this story before, but my father um, twice was given three months to live with cancer. This, he beat it the first time, came back with a fury. Mm. At the same time, his doctor said you're like borderline diabetic, eliminate sugar from your diet. Mm -hmm. He did. He lived another 16 years and he did not die from cancer. Wow. Yeah. And then I had heard cancer needs sugar to yes. survive. And a lot yeah. of doctors are not going to back that up because you've got all these big companies that need sugar to make their billions. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Sugar right. is lethal. lethal. It is. It is. Um, there have been studies um, on sugar, and and it's fascinating why it's not a controlled substance. I mean, of course it won't be, <laughs> but with all the research, but it, but like you said, it's more addictive than cocaine. It is. It is more addictive than narcotics, and they've done studies right. um, showing that that the improving that and the studies that have been done. Um, showing that sugar is okay and, and you can have fructose and it's, it's not, it's, um, glucose is necessary. Fructose is not, um, and it's actually detrimental and our type two diabetes, um, should not be called type two by diabetes. It should be called the processed food disease or the sugar disease, um, mm -hmm because it is onset by what we do to our bodies. So and type two type two diabetes is curable. It's curable. It is. Absolutely. Curable. It is. And the other component to um, let's say that I, I, I tell people 90% of the time, 80% of the time eat this way, 10, 20, you're going to go off. You're going to a wedding um, Sandy and you might whatever indulge in a piece of cake or a glass of wine. Which I or, rarely eat. Yeah. There you go. So you, you might do yeah. something, but let's say you do and you enjoy yourself within 10 minutes of eating that. If you can do some kind of activity, like do I'll some go on the dance floor, go on the dance floor. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Do some jump, jumping jacks, like go walk, go raise your heart rate to help process that sugar. Um, the other thing is weight bearing exercise is so important. It um, is good for bone density. It's good for metabolizing what we're eating and um, getting fiber. They found that if you're eating sugar and fiber together, that specifically like coconut fiber, coconut flour is really good for you, um, that it helps to, instead of spiking the sugar, it just kind of comes up and it plateaus and it goes back down because it's able to absorb in the body. But when you're getting cake, for example, you have all the sugar, you have gluten, and it's a disaster waiting to happen. Um, and and our bodies are so resilient, Sandy, and to your point of your father, um, when we do get sick, 
our body is like a scrape that we get on our hand, they should be able to heal. So back pain, whatever it is, joint pain, um, type two diabetes, our body should be able to heal, but not given the opportunity, they can't. And so it's, it's really important to um, watch that sugar level and be very mindful of it. And if you, again, if you are getting sugar, just be really careful and maybe try to eat as well sourced as possible and get some exercise in there and stay under 25 grams. So if you are going to go to the wedding and have something, just make sure that like your daily content is under that 25 level so that you can be healthy. But I love that, the story that you shared of your father. That's amazing. You know, I found, um, it all started with me. I couldn't eat donuts. Anytime I took a bite of a donut, I would get very upset, a really badly upset stomach. So mm. I haven't eaten a donut in 25 years. Mm. Um, and then it, I, I would have just a teaspoon of sugar in my coffee and my stomach started to bother me. Well, I thought it was the coffee. Well, it turns out it was the sugar. So now I only put, you know, vitamin D milk in my coffee, no sugar. And, and so I pretty much limit it, but you still get sugar in so many things that you eat. I mean, oh, yeah. who doesn't love a McDonald's French fry? There's sugar on those things. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It, That's why you can't eat just one McDonald's French fry because there's sugar on it. And, yeah. Uh, there's sugur and sugar and fat-free that. milk. Yeah. Fat-free milk contains yeah, sugar. Yeah, fat-free milk is not don't. good. You're better off with vitamin yeah. D. Yeah. 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 So the last thing I want to talk about, because... I'm a, I love Joe Rogan podcast. Mm -hmm. And what I love about him is not only the personality and it's entertaining conversations, but you learn about so many different topics. And I love how he's got Jamie there. They're doing research. It's very factual. They're very, they're, he's really, really um, committed to bringing true facts. And he, I was listening when I was driving back home today, third time this week on three different episodes, they're talking about seed oils. And I can't speak to it. I am not a nutritionist, but what really was very profound for me is that it's kind of a step above the oil that we put in our cars. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it is for you. Yeah. Yeah. It is. How is this stuff still like grapeseed oil? Why is that still available? Exactly. Um, it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap and it's cheap. And, yeah. um, and there is no regulation on it. Um, so yes, it's very processed and it's a very delicate, um, seed. And so after it's processed, it does create this oxidation and it's really bad when we ingest it. And to your point of coffee. So when you're using it and you're eating something, you might think, oh, these beets are really bad for me. I don't do well with beets. And you put this oil on it and it's really not that raw food. It's actually what you're putting on it. And then if you're cooking in it, that's even worse because now you're creating more oxidation. And I'd like to just to throw in there, if you are doing high temperature cooking, avocado oil, pure avocado oil is the, the highest burn point um, oil that you can use, which I think is, you know, any frying, any, anything like use avocado oil. And I quickly when it just, I have to, I feel I'm compelled to touch on this topic too of soy um, and mm -hmm. say that, that soy in, in cultures that we've been, that have, that the American FDA has touted to us live longer because they eat soy, they do it very differently. They have a very long fermentation process for their tempeh and their tofu and and then when they eat it in tiny, small amounts, they have fish broth and they have sea vegetables that counteract different things that have been removed from the fermentation process that are necessary to put back in to have a balance. And so there's a very intuitive way to eat it. Here in the States, I just wanted to say that there's something called soy protein isolate and it's in everything, right? Um, mm. Soy protein isolate is a waste product from making soy oil. They've scraped off all that black gunk from the top. They spent billions of dollars saying, what can we do with this waste product? And they figured out how to create soy protein isolate, 
which here's the kicker is only approved for use in cardboard. However, they allow up to 6% in food consumption. This soy protein isolate gets into drinks, like you'll see your, um, your, your sport protein powders. It's in there. It's in baby formula. Um, and what we found is that it creates um, a, a sort of birth control. Um, and so babies that are on a soy-based formula are actually getting the equivalent to two to three birth control pills a day. And oh my God. in addition to some formulas still use high fructose corn syrup in, in the formula. So it's really, it's fascinating, but I, I want to caution people. Like if you're a cancer survivor, breast cancer survivor in particular, and doctors that know what they're talking about will tell you, avoid soy. It increases your estrogen mm -hmm. level and it will feed into this. And, and then if you're in addition, and if, if you want to eat that real fermented soy, go to a great, you know, Japanese market and they've got good tempeh that has been fermented for a long time and then eat it naturally the way that they would recommend in like a miso soup or something. But just going out and eating soy cheese, soy milk, uh, all this is, is going to wreak havoc on your body. Wow. Yeah. Well, this was such an amazing conversation and you gave so much information. <laughs> like, wow. Well, it, it, in a few months, we're going to have to do it again because I'm sure there'll be a lot more that we can talk about. Yes. I would so, thought Colette, that. How can people get a hold of you and find out more about, you know, how they can work with you to help them transform their life? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. In, from the inside out for sure. Right. I love that. And thank you for letting me come on Sandy, because my, since I found what it was that changed my life, I have not been able to stop talking about it. And my goal is to just share information and bring this awareness to people so that they can be healthy too, because when you're healthy, you're happy. Right. And it's all correlated. And so I love what you're doing and the message that you're sending out about happiness. And you can reach me at wellness by Colette and it's C O L E T T E one T one, one L two T's or, um, wellness by Colette.com. Those are the two best ways to reach me. Um, and I'm again, thankful Sandy for you having me on here and, um, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has, just reach out. Oh, well, thank you. And the gist of it is, if you really want to be happy and you want to create, create that success in your life, everything that we just talked about is a big component of that because you really are what you eat. And when yeah. you're putting this bad stuff in your body, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't no. feel good. Yeah. And, and, and I learned just from um, being a COVID late bloomer and I, I, I came down with COVID October 1st of 2022, the very first time mm. I was sick in bed for eight days, but I was really didn't feel well for three weeks. I had a headache for three weeks. Let me tell you something. It's really hard. Even as you know, America's happiness coach that I am, right? It's really hard to feel happy when you're not feeling good. It's, it's yes. horrible. It gave me a whole new perspective on people that live with some of these conditions on a daily basis. No wonder we're so miserable in this com country when I don't even know what the percentage is, is living with some sort of chronic disease. And, you know, you take care of your, the inside, take care of your mindset and boy, you, you're going to have an amazing life. That's right. I know. You live inside a lot longer. Out. That's for sure. Yep. Yep. That's right. <sighs> um, but yeah, so it's, it's beautiful to feel good. It, feels good to feel good. And then that radiates and that happiness is contagious. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are such a wealth of information and thank you again. And I know that this is going to benefit so many people, um, to just, just live that, live a, live a happier life and be healthy. Yes. You know, if, you, if COVID didn't wake you up, you know, I don't know what will, but, uh, there's always time. There's always, you know, you didn't do it today, start again tomorrow. 
Yes. It's never too I love late it. to make these changes in your life for sure. It's not. Yes. All right, Colette, thank you so much. And thank you to all the listeners that are listening today. Thank you, Sandy.